Today I want to talk about the solar generator that I built uh, based upon the design by a gentleman that goes by the name of Solar Burrito. And it, it's pretty self-sufficient. It has everything that I need uh, to charge my electronics when I go up to my son's property. There's no power there yet. We're trying to develop the land, figure out um, uh, what, what we want to build, where. And so by going up north, um, and being there for a couple of days, you know, I need a place to charge my phone. If I'm up there for, for a long weekend or for sometimes during the week, I do work up there, so I need a place to charge my laptop. And this design that Solar Burrito came up with is, you know, completely fills uh, all the requirements that I need for charging my electronics. And it's, uh, it's all self-sufficient. There's, uh, there's an external uh, solar panel. Uh, that connects directly into the box itself, but it's got a USB port uh, for charging phones or tablets. It's got a 12 volt port if you want to connect in anything that, you know, that has a direct DC connection. Um, I plug in a power inverter so that I can charge my laptop. Again, it's, it's uh, a very good design. Uh, everything is uh, all enclosed within the case, so you can just pick it up and go. And um, one of the things that, that's nice about this is, is that it's, it's pretty durable. I've used it several times already and I'm a little rough on things and it's, it's lasted uh, uh, quite a while for me. Now, everything that you need to build this is on Solar Burrito's webpage, a materials list and where to buy that. And so I'll provide a link to his webpage uh, in the description of this video. Uh, but you can build this in a day and a half, I'm sorry, within a half a day once you have all your materials. And it was pretty fun to build. I've never built anything like this, so if, if I can do it, I'm sure that uh, you guys can too. But what I'd like to do is show you how I built it and give you the step-by-steps the -step in putting this together. And again, it was uh, fun to do, and I'm going to get a lot of benefit out of it as well. So let's go to the shop and uh, put this together. Let's take a minute to discuss the wiring uh, for the solar generator. I would recommend that you get um, either 12 gauge or 14 gauge wire um, and then you would purchase it in uh, two colors and you would purchase it in red and in black. With the DC wiring system, uh, wiring, it's, it's pretty simple as long as you remember that you have positive and negative and positive from your battery goes to the positive to, all, to do your devices and the same thing with the negative from your battery out to all your devices and by keeping um, that straight it's very simple to wire but also by getting the different colors red for positive and black for negative it will also um, help with any troubleshooting that you have to do later uh, making sure that you know is this the right wire or is it that wire but if it's all one color it makes it kind of difficult to do so again uh, 12 to 14 gauge and then red and black so how the system works is that the brains of it all is through this charge controller and this charge controller is uh, very simple uh, it, to wire so we have uh, on the charge controller we have input from a solar panel we have an uh, output to a battery we also have an output to uh, a load uh, connection here. And what that load connection is, is that when the solar power, solar panel is uh, generating energy and the battery is full, um, or you don't even have to have a battery on it, you can just have your solar panel. And then the extra energy is sent out the, the load so you can power an additional uh, port uh, while you're charging up, uh, while you have the solar panel connected up. Uh, we're not going to use this in this application, so we'll just have two connections into the charge controller. We'll have um, the solar panel, and then we'll have the battery. And you can see right here, it's very easy. Very, It's labeled uh, positive and negative from the solar panel, so that's the input. Positive and negative to the battery, that's the output. And so we'll have uh, that connection. That'll be the first connection that we, uh, or first thing that we install is the uh, charge controller. Now off of the, again, the solar panel comes in, positive and negative, and it goes to positive and negative of the charge controller. Now in my design, I'm using something called a quick disconnect. And it's this, this connector here. It's an SAE uh, connector. And it's pretty much just a, 
an adapter that I bought at a motorcycle shop that they sell for uh, luggage compartments and stuff. But it's an SAE, and what this allows us to do is we can take our connection from our solar panel and we can quickly connect it. It makes it nice and clean, a nice clean connecting connection. And when we're ready to disconnect it, we can close it up. Keeps it relatively watertight. Um, so it's a nice thing to do, and we'll put this in the side of the case. Now, once it comes into the case, we'll take another connection and we'll do the same thing. We'll connect this, we'll plug this in, and we'll take the opposite end uh, to the charge controller. <clears throat> and we'll take the positive side and the negative side and wire it just as it is in here. Now, I like to note that um, this particular wire has an inline fuse. And anything that you're taking to your charge controller or to your battery or anything within the system, it should be fused on the positive side. So anywhere where you are connecting up a positive connection to the battery or to the charge controller, it should be fused in some way. And I can show you what I'm going to do, but we'll talk about this design here later. I've got a little bit different plan than what the drawing shows, but we'll we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Um, again, the wiring is very simple. So um, the power comes in on our solar panel, positive and negative, into the uh, charge controller, out to the battery, positive and negative, positive to the battery, negative to the battery, and then now uh, when the solar power comes in, uh, it's sent over to charge controller and then out to the battery. Now you'll notice here I've got another quick disconnect and so what this connection is for is going out to a battery tender and so I want this connection here so that when this unit is in storage um, I can go ahead and maintain the integrity of the battery by putting it onto a battery tender. This serves two purposes. One, it will make sure that my battery um, doesn't completely discharge and it maintains the life of the battery. Second thing is is that I know it's charged and so when I'm ready to go somewhere I can just grab the case and go and I don't have to wait until I get on site to hook up the solar panel and hope that it's sunny to start charging the battery. I'll know going out the door that this unit is ready to go because it's got a full battery. Now <clears throat> once we get this all connected, uh, the solar panel into the charge controller, charge controller into the battery. Um, now we've got to get power out to our devices. And so what we've done is we've taken the negative and we've uh, connected it to a bus bar. And that's what we have here is here's the the negative from my battery and that's that's coming in here and then I've just taken this wire and I've looped it on one side strip back the insulation and I have it here so now this is a common bus bar so that we have one in one input in but multiple outs so that keeps the wiring nice and clean and so you would do this for the negative side and then you would also do it for the positive side of course this wire would be red but you have a um, positive from your battery coming in and it's looped here and then now you can take out individual leads out to your end devices be it a USB port or voltmeter or <clears throat> a main switch. Now let's talk about the main switch for just for a second. Um, in Solar Burrito's design he put a kill switch on there so that when the switch is off the whole unit um, doesn't power anything and I think that's a great idea. And so the switch that I'm using is uh, does not come with uh, <laughs> a markings of negative and positive, but what I'd like to show you is is that one side has got a brass color, and the other two pins on here um, are silver in color. And so what this is is that this side here is my positive coming in or the power coming in from my battery. That would be this connection here. Then. Uh, when the switch is in this position, it does not pass power over. When I flip the switch, it transfers the power out this bar here, and that would be the bar that would come into uh, this panel here. So that would be this wire here. And then there's a negative here. Now the negative on this switch is strictly to control the illumination of this light. It has nothing to do with the box. Uh, this light needs a, a, a neutral or ground to take the to illuminate the light so that's the only purpose for this connection here so if you don't want the light you won't need a, a negative connection uh, to the switch but it is kind of nice you've, you've got it so so 
that's pretty much it on the wiring. As long as you make sure that you keep it straight, negative and positive, it's very easy to wire. Now I wanna elaborate a little bit more on, I did something different. Earlier I had said that, you know, any anywhere where you have your positive connections, you should have a fuse so that you're protecting your equipment as well as yourself. Um, these can get a little expensive, as well as the wiring, it makes the wiring kind of, um, uh, a little bit messy because you've got all these bulkheads uh, it, you know that you're trying to wire and there's not much of a, a, a lead on these and you can get different types you just happen the type that uh, that are readily available for me and so what I've done is I've taken a 12 volt fuse box that you know you can put into a boat or into a car and I've connected that on one side so I basically I've done the same thing that I did on this uh, bus bar here as I've taken one side and in common the, the whole side and that's what I did on this fuse box. I took a piece of wire and I laid it across this side. So this side that's covered up looks just like this, a bunch of individual leads. I, I placed the wire on there, stripped back the insulation, um, and then I placed uh, the wire on here and then I soldered it to make it a nice solid connection. So I've got one wire coming in It's soldered on this side. So now this this whole side is common and I can fuse my individual inputs uh, Going out to you know the switch or a voltmeter or you know a USB port whatever you have in your system so what this does is that it makes all my fuses in one spot, makes the wiring a little bit neater. I don't have all the bulky inline fuses. Um, so that's another option. You know, it's an extra step. I think it's cleaner. It'll make it a whole lot easier if you were to have a problem on one of your devices uh, to troubleshoot. You've got one spot to go to and, and there you are. So this is pretty much the wiring. Uh, pretty simple. Um, again, negative, positive, if you can keep that straight and make sure that all the positives go to the positives and all the negatives go to the negatives, uh, your system should work just fine. The first step in assembling the solar generator is to cut out a pattern so that we'll have something to fit inside the case to mount our charge controller, our power distribution bar, and the outlets that we plan on charging our RN devices. The nice thing about the, uh, the case that Solo Burrito specifies in his bill of materials is that there's uh, some foam pieces that come inside. So I just took out one of the foam pieces, laid it on top of the plywood, and now I'm able to take a pencil and trace the pattern out so that we'll get a near perfect fit for the board that we're going to mount all of our equipment to. So all we need to do that is uh, a three quarter inch piece of plywood. I just happen to have a piece of scrap birch here and a scroll saw and you should be able to cut this out uh, real close to the pattern to fit inside the case. Okay we've now got this cut out. Um, I can uh, take this away. We have uh, the pattern for our piece of plywood to fit inside our case. Let's see how this fits. Moment of truth here. So perfect. It fits right in. Now we have uh, the piece of plywood that well, we can start mounting uh, our components to. And so we can figure out what, where we're gonna lay these things out. Now I ordered this off of line. Uh, here I have a 12 volt cigarette lighter, uh, a voltmeter, as well as a USB port, uh, just like I, I showed in my drawing. But now that we have this in here, we can go ahead and uh, place our battery in and figure out where we need to put the bolts uh, coming through the plywood to secure the battery. And then once that's done, we can go ahead and uh, install our uh, auxiliary ports here for our solar panel and our battery tender. But this seems to, this is the first step that we need to do uh, to get things mounted and figuring out where things go. All right, the next thing we want to do is uh, we want to secure our battery. So, here I have a, a sealed battery. I would recommend that you not do this unless you have a sealed battery. So what we need to do is uh, put in a bracket, and this is just some uh, angle iron I got from uh, Home Depot. And so what this is going to do, it's going to allow us to secure our, our case or our battery. So I'm gonna place this in here 
kind of get a general idea where I want to drill the holes. So I'll drill some holes into the case and then what I'll do is then come back and bring the bolts up from underneath and then I'll put a, uh, a washer on here so that it uh, doesn't pull through on the bottom of the case. And to make sure that it's secured, what I'm going to do is, is once the bolt comes through, I'll put a couple washers here and then lock this down um, with a nut so that uh, this bolt is secure and it's not just riding on this for the security of it. So it'll be there. And then um, uh, once this is all in place, then we can put our, our brace in and then I'll just come back with another uh, nut and secure that. Okay, now the battery is all secured. That's, uh, that's not going anywhere. It's tight, I'm pulling on it, can't move the battery. So just remember when you mount your battery to have the terminals facing up versus opposite, it's gonna be kind of hard to put your uh, connections on. So the next thing we need to do now is cut a couple of holes to allow our uh, bore to fit through. So we, I've got to mark the un underside of this not quite sure how I'm going to do that just yet, so let me figure that out and I'll get back with you. Okay, actually it was uh, simpler than I thought it would be to try and mark these holes. So what I've done is uh, I've disassembled the carriage bolts and taken the battery out and I put our board in. And so uh, it's now empty. Um, I thought about just putting the board in here and see if it would go down, but there is a lip here and I didn't want to push the board all the way down and, and ruin the integrity of the case. So I'm just going to put the uh, put the board in here, we're going to close this, we're going to flip it over, and then we'll take a pencil and reach in here and put an X here on the board. I can feel the board, I'm just going to put an X on there. We can then flip it back over, and we'll take our case, or our board out of the case. And there we go, there's our X's. So we have one, one here, one here. I'll go ahead and take my drill and drill those out and then reassemble the case with the battery and the board on there. All right, as you can see, I've got the board secured. I used a couple of wing nuts from the bo uh, bolts that's securing the battery. Next thing we need to do is lay out our components so that we can drill holes to uh, accept those. Um, First thing that I'll, I'll secure is our charge controller. We'll put this here. The next thing I'll uh, kind of figure out where to go is this assembly here. And this has got all of our uh, cigarette lighter, 12 volt cigarette lighter, our voltmeter, our USB port. But I can use this uh, plate here to figure out exactly where, to, where this goes. I can drill the, use this to uh, figure out where the holes go and I can drill that so that that'll go there and then I'll put in a switch and that'll be for the voltmeter So that uh, we can shut that off when it's not in use and that's pretty much it on the board We don't have uh, any more components going in other than this and so let me go ahead and draw these circles out and get these holes drilled and I'll come back when that's all completed Okay, so I'm back I've drilled the holes for uh, our components that we're going to be installing. And so uh, they fit kind of snug, but that's great. A nice tight fit. I've got it for um, the cigarette lighter, the voltmeter, the USB port, my switch uh, to kill the power to the voltmeter. 
Uh, this is where our contro charge controller is going to go. So I drilled a couple of holes to allow the wires to come through. One for the solar panel coming in and then one out to the battery. So let's go ahead and put this together. Okay, there we go. Now we have the top all done for our solar generator. Here we have the switch for the voltmeter. We have our USB port, uh, and then we have our cigarette lighter uh, for here so we can plug in our inverter or anything else. We've got the holes drilled to go to our charge controller. So the top is done. Now we can start working on installing the two um, external uh, connections, one for the solar power or solar panel, the other one for the battery tender. Uh, that's what we'll do next. The next thing that we need to do is we need to install the SAE Quick Disconnect. I plan on installing it directly under the latch, but the, one of the issues is, is that this is just a little bit too big to fit in the groove in the case. So what we're going to need to do is trim a little bit off of each side so that it fits uh, just inside the, the opening that's here. Once we get this cut, We'll take a step drill and then we'll keep drilling down until it increases to the right size to where this will fit right in. Now one of the nice things about this SAE connector is that it comes with a backing plate. And this backing plate will fit uh, securely um, here in this opening on the back side and so that it'll pinch in between the, the case. And so that as we plug and unplug, it'll be a nice secure connection where this won't come loose. So this was, again, one of the hardest things I had to find, but I was able to find it at uh, one of the motorcycle shops here in their accessories department. But it's well worth uh, looking for them. You can probably find them on the internet and uh, they're well worth it. I, I think it's a good addition to, to the case. Now I went ahead and went ahead and drilled the hole on the other side here and I've already trimmed uh, the other connector here. So as you can see, this just fits nicely in here. We can go ahead and we can close it and it doesn't interfere with opening and closing of the case. I think it's a, it's a good spot for that. And then once we get inside here, we we'll, should be able to just go ahead and take this plate secured in here and make this nice and tight. So we'll go ahead and uh, get those two installed and then we can go ahead after that we're pretty much done and ready for wiring. Let's start wiring up our, our solar generator. I went ahead and uh, drilled a hole in the front for our 
our main uh, cutoff switch, just the same thing as the original design by uh, Solar Burrito. And so this will be going in here. So I've, I've uh, go ahead and drilled that hole. And the one other thing that I want to mention is, is I changed the design just a little bit. Originally, I was using this distribution bar and it was a uh, continuous cable that I had kind of looped in here. And this didn't look all that great. To me, this didn't look pretty, this didn't look pretty at all or very professional. So I was able to, to go out online and find this other uh, distribution bar that have these uh, this this clamp or this bar that goes in here that will connect all the way to one side so I can have one coming in from the battery and then all of these can go out to my uh, end devices. Uh, this looks much nicer, more professional. Um, this will work. They perform the same function, but from an appearance standpoint, uh, this definitely looks more professional. So I'm going to be using this uh, instead of this, but that's the only change in the design so far as we progress through this. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to reference back to the original drawing that I showed at the beginning of the video is that if you can remember red is positive, black is negative, when you go to wire everything up it'll keep it very simple, very straight and you shouldn't have a problem. And it will be very easy to troubleshoot if you've used the color coded cabling. Uh, it, it's very simple to do. Now I apologize that I uh, started on this and realized that the camera wasn't started um, but what I've done is I've gone ahead and run a red wire and a black wire for the solar panel up through the holes that I drilled here and then went ahead and used this uh, the, the quick connect here uh, crimp this this connector on so they plug directly underneath uh, the connector and I can tighten it down um, I didn't have that on video of uh, making uh, this particular end but it's pretty simple to do and what it is is that you've got your solar that will be coming in, your battery that will be going out and I just drilled a couple of holes and on the back side here, let me uh, prop, prop this up so I can show you what I'm doing. So on the back side here, these two wires will be going over to the battery from the charge controller and then this set of wires will be going to our disconnect where we will be connecting here uh, which is our input for our solar panel so it's a quick disconnect down below pretty simple to do and I soldered the, the connections here um, just to make sure that it's uh, we've got a good connection and there's not going to be any problems uh, when I move this around if it's things working loose so it's soldered and I just got them uh, just to, uh, a bread wrapper here just to kind of hold it back but that's uh, not on camera but it's pretty simple as you can see red for positive black for negative into our quick disconnect and then we have two coming in that'll go directly to the battery so let me go ahead and uh, start putting this together uh, follow the diagram that was that, that, that I just showed you and you should have no problems in putting this together Okay, so this is what it should look like uh, when you're done. I have the negative coming in from the battery into my distribution bar. I have a negative going out to the kill switch to illuminate the light. And then I have a negative going out to each one of the components. I have my USB drive, uh, my USB charger, I have my voltmeter, and I also have my uh, 12 volt cigarette lighter. I've also got another negative lead going to the switch that will turn the power or turn the LED on for the battery uh, voltmeter and again this uh, black wire is only to illuminate the light you don't need it but it's nice to have so that's what the negative should look like when you're all said and done let me go ahead and get the positive side wired up and I'll show you what that looks like 
Okay, there we go. We now have the positive side uh, wired up. So I have the positive here going to the switch. And as we turn the, the main switch on and off, that'll provide power uh, to this fuse box. And then coming out of here, I've got it going to uh, the positive side of, again, of our components that we have in here. Now there's a small uh, jumper cable here that'll go from the switch to the voltmeter, just so that it turns it on and off from the switch. Um, I didn't staple these down because I was trying to keep these as short as possible um, just to keep the wires down and I didn't want to make the tension too tight on these connections up here. But this is how it's wired. Uh, red is positive, black is negative, and it's pretty simple to do. So here we have it, uh, the finished uh, product. A couple of modifications that I made was is that we have the input for the battery tender, we have the input for the solar panel and on the solar panel I just took a another SAE connector and then I took a 25 foot cord and uh, I've uh, hardwired it here so that I can um, take the connector take the solar panel run it out to where I need to and then this just plugs um, conveniently into the slot right here and what this allows me to do is that I can disconnect the, the solar panel bring it in the house and then hook it up to the battery tender when need be but so I have uh, the solar panel connection and then here's our main switch for turning power on and off to the box as in the original design and so when the power is on I can turn the uh, the outlets on here be it whatever which one I'm using see my battery reading and then my charge controller is showing the charge on the battery very fun very practical very nice uh, design. So again, I thank Solar Burrito for his uh, inspiration for me to, to build one of my own. I hope that I've inspired you to do the same. So until next time, God bless and take care.